Gera style is much more of a sort of verite documentary kind of style. That really plays to his strength. He's brilliant at uh, kind of looking through the viewfinder and seeing what is a good looking shot. So what we wanted to do was give Gareth the opportunity to shoot his space battles and other all digital scenes uh, the same way he shoots his live action. And then he could go in with this sort of virtual viewfinder and view the space battle going on and figure out what the best angle was to shoot that uh, those ships from. And it was great because it, it allowed for sort of spontaneous discovery of great angles. And a, a good example of that is when the um, dish array is, is docking into the Death Star. That wasn't something that was storyboarded and pre vised and all the rest. We had set up that scene with the Death Star and the dish slowly sinking into it. Gareth just happened to notice, oh, look, that's cool. And he got in close to one of the Star Destroyers as the shadow was uh, crossing, you know, revealing it. One of the amazing things about shooting a film like this at this point in time is the technology that's available to us now. We're able to build lights into sets that, that are completely adjustable for color. Wait, we're not through. If we're flying in space and there's lasers all around, you want those little red and green light flashes that, uh, that go by. You want all that interaction to be visible on the, the characters. And so we have these giant LED panels and we prepared imagery that's what the environment was to be around the, the characters and the, the screens are very bright so that they illuminate the characters and it gets us a very high level of realism and flexibility. For the actors I think in the space battle cockpits for them to be able to see what was happening in the battle brought a higher level of accuracy to their performance. Stay with me! One of the things John Knoll pioneered was scanning and coming up with a kit bashing approach to how we detail the models so that they really felt physical and also felt like they blended with the original films. One of our favorite parts is actually this part right here. Um, and this part's actually visible in a lot of places. Having all these kit pieces really helped because it was another way for us to sort of embrace the, the style and the universe of how these miniatures were done originally. One of our biggest challenges was designing the U-Wing. And we had set the bar really high. I mean, we knew that we had to design something that fit within the episode four design vocabulary. We designed that ship probably for a good, almost two years until Shortly, you know, right before we started shooting. And I just recently went back and counted um, all the designs, and we did 781 versions of the U-Wing. In the past, we've seen the Death Star fire, but we've only ever really seen that from a distance, from space. To have the opportunity to basically show the power of the Death Star from ground level was a really um, fantastic opportunity. We tried to make that sort of as impressive and as terrifying as possible. There was really one key piece of artwork that an artist in the art department had come up with that showed this almost breaking wave of debris with a tiny ship trying to escape from it. And I think that really became the inspiration for, for the look of the whole sequence. I've got this immensely talented crew that are some of the best artists in the world at doing what they do. Every day I see something, oh my God, that is so cool. And that happens over and over again, and it's amazing to see.